What's happening guys? Let's talk about abstract class. In the previous video we saw what was an interface in this class. I mean in this video let's talk about abstract class. So I'm going to go and create a package and say a sample abstract car whatever. All right, next is create a new Java class and and let's make it a car. And hit OK. Now we have public class car. All right. Now let's let's uh, a little bit modify the class and add this keyword called as abstract. Now what is this abstract keyword doing? This abstract keyword is basically telling Java one of two things. The first thing is don't instantiate uh don't instantiate a new car class because why car class we are adding abstract to this car class right so so this is the first thing it says uh, and if if that is not the instruction then the instruction should be the second thing which is this class doesn't provide implementation oh man I hate this you know I run into all wrong spellings and uh, whatever so this class doesn't provide implementation for all the methods that's it so these are the only two reasons why we don't uh, why we use an abstract class let me explain uh, one by one let's talk about don't instantiate a new car class what do I mean it means that we don't want any new car like this we can't do something like you know uh, let's say car uh, Audi equals new car that is what we are telling we cannot do something like this okay and the second one I'll explain that as we proceed in the video let's uh for the sake of understanding what I'm gonna do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say protected and I would say int doors ah. all right so protected int doors and then I'm going to provide one method let's let's uh, call it public void set doors that's it that's all I'm going to do and now if I if I do something like this it's throwing me hey you're missing a method body or you declare this as an abstract you know what it means it means that either provide me the body like this or you got to make me abstract that's what it says all right now I've done this abstract let's see what what is the implication of this I'm going to go to my package and create a new Java class and this time I'm going to create let's say B M W car okay now this BMW extends our abstract class because BMW is basically a car now as soon as I do that it says hey BMW must be declared abstract or it should implement a method which is called as set doors which is available inside the car class now you can do one of two things here let's first let's you know let me go control O and uh, set the doors now as soon as I do that what happens is this error is gone why because I provided an implementation for the set doors method so why was there a pressure to provide and you know provide implementation it's because we declared our cl car class abstract you know this abstract keyword is responsible for enforcing the, the the child class to provide the implementation such as this set doors got it 
So that is one reason why we want to use abstract, which is, you know, this class doesn't provide implementation for all the methods. Notice, you know, uh, we can have another method, let's say public void set uh, counter, and then we can have open, close, and provide implementation, whatever, okay? And at the same time, if we wish, we don't want to provide implementation, that's also perfectly fine. That is the difference between abstract and interface. This is a major difference between abstract class and an interface. The interface always, always will never help you provide an implementation, but the abstract class provides, uh, I mean, helps you to provide an implementation, but it is optional. Whether you want it or not, it's up to you. So if you don't want to provide an implementation in that event, you say simply public abstract. You attach this abstract keyword, and therefore this abstract keyword enforces whatever child class uh, is used by the car. So I mean, BMW is a child class which is using the car class. All right, now, because of the implementation, it's asking us to set the doors. Now, since BMW is a typical regular car, I would say this dot doors equals four. And by the way, you can think, oh, where is this doors coming? We don't have any fields at all. But if you think strategically, I mean, you don't have to think very, you know, rocket science or whatever. You know, if you just think about it a little more, we are using extends, right? Now, because of our extends keyword, it is just coming along. This doors field is coming along to our BMW class as well. So our BMW class, although is not seen here having a doors field, it is containing a doors field because we are extending it from the car class. Now that is an advantage, you see? So that is a uh, set doors. Now let us try and create a new Java class and we'll call it limo. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the limo scene. So now again, let's extend it because it's a car anyway. And then what we are going to do is I'm going to do control O and notice. See, if I don't want to provide an implementation for set doors, all I need to do is this. You see, as soon as I do abstract, the requirement that I should provide an implementation is taken off. So that is a big deal. And, uh, and the reason why you want to consider using abstract. Okay, now if I can do something like this and let's, let's provide an implementation as well. Control O and set doors. And this time I'm going to say this dot doors equals since it's a limousine, I don't know how many doors. This is some kind of a fancy limousine that contains 12 doors. All right, because you know, I haven't counted how many doors a limousine really has. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you guys know, please put it on the comment section. Uh, that would be useful when uh, you guys can, when you and I can travel in a limousine. <laughs> anyway, so uh, that's uh, setting doors, right? Now let's go and create a new Java class and call it main. And then we'll do PSVM, which is public static void main. As soon as I do that, let's see. We can have a BMW, right? BMW will call it XBMW. I don't know what kind of BMW this is. This is, you know, an extended version of BMW and then we'll call it as a new BMW. All right, now let us uh, do something for uh, our limo as well. Limo, and we'll say oh, medium limo is now a new limo. So now notice that we can instantiate a new BMW, a new limo. But let us try and instantiate a new car. Let us see what that would give us. So I would say car, you know, car, whatever, A, B, C is a new car. As soon as I do that, notice what happens. Do 
you cannot instantiate. You know, that's what it says. God is abstract. You cannot instantiate. So now I hope you understood what I mean by number one or number two. Or probably you want to use abstract for both the cases. You know, maybe you don't want it to be instantiated and maybe you don't even want to provide an implementation. So therefore you want to use abstract. It's up to you. Like, you know, so basically abstract is used for one of two things, uh, whichever that is uh, based on your requirements. But at this point, I'm, I'm going to get rid of it. And then simply I'm going to say X limo, actually X BMW dot set doors. All right, then we'll say med limo dot set doors. Now all I have to do is S out and uh, how do I get the value of the doors? X BMW dot doors, right? This would provide me the number of doors in a BMW and med limo dot doors would provide me the number of doors in the M-E-D-L-I-M-O object. Let's run it. Wow. So here we have an exception. Can you guys tell me why? Java language class not found. Which is basically simple car main. Where is that coming from? Class URL class loader. Why is that? Oh, I get why what's happening. You know what? You know what? I have to do right click and run. The reason why I'm getting a crash is because it's trying to run here and some kind of a mess is going on. You know, I should run this, explicitly run this. You see, now it worked. So four is XBMW's door and uh, Medlimo's door is 12. You see, even though you had the same method, set doors, set doors, you see the power of uh, abstraction. We'll talk about this more when we come to, like I said, the strategy pattern. But then before we get into strategy pattern, we'll look at what is known as polymorphism in the next video. But I, I guess I may, it makes sense for you when, when we talk about, you know, abstraction. You know, abstraction is basically, let me give you a quick brief of what we spoke. You can use abstract keyword for one of two things, which is number one, you, you don't want to instantiate a new class. You know, you don't want to instantiate a new car class. It's perfectly fine. You can use abstract. And then if you don't want to provide an implementation for all the methods, that's still fine. But then again, you have to use abstract for, you know, whatever class you don't want to provide implementations in the method it contains for, you know what I mean? Like, so that's the idea behind abstract, uh, abstract class, abstract method. So when you, when you declare a method abstract, it means that you're not providing any implementation, but look at this. So you're not providing any implementation, but to make this abstract, you should have abstract class. If you don't have, it throws me an error, you see? So you must make this abstract and you're good to go. So that's it. Have a great day. In the next video, we'll talk about polymorphism and stuff like that. Maybe. And then after that, probably we'll get into a real world project, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm trying to cover as much as I can in as much time I have. So uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share. Have a good day.